All right, YouTube, this is uh, Eric uh, working on the my sister's 2003 Saturn L200. Uh, her wheel actually fell off on the other side of the car. So what I'm doing is the hub assemblies, uh, which are press-in bearings on these. So they're a bit of a bear to get off. So I already took the wheel off straight forward. It's got these obnoxious wheel, wheel bolt thingies, not your traditional studs that come out. So you take all those out. Uh, I'm going to be replacing the rotors. Uh, if I'm a little winded, it's because these caliper bolts right here, they are um, Allen 10 mil um, little socket thingy. So I actually had to stick it. It's so rusty. I had to stick it in the end, pound it in with a hammer. And then I actually have a, a mag light here to break it loose. So I put that on the end right here. Got really hard on it and finally got it to break loose. And you can see it's actually, let me see if I can focus here. You can see it's actually turning. So once I break that loose, it's good. I can do it by hand, it's still really stiff, but I'm gonna take these two bolts out, take this caliper off, and we'll move, move to the uh, next step. And then just grab whatever you can. Um, and also, I sprayed pretty much every bolt I could imagine us needing to do um, with PB Blaster or whatever, you know, penetrating oil you have. Um, so I sprayed up this bolt because that's gonna be coming off um, these two bolts right here. And there's one that matches up with that on the bottom that I can't get a great angle of underneath, but it's just for these uh, these bolts right here. I'm gonna pull this line off, we'll get to that. And then we're gonna have to take uh, this guy off. I'll show you kind of a, a weird way to do that, but we'll go step by step. So first, take these two bolts out right here, one right here. You can see it's the whole caliper uh, mount right there. And then the one that matches up on the bottom there. So as you can tell, I can't hold the camera while I'm doing this, but a little extension will get you there for the top one and just go He-Man on it and keep using some PB Blaster to continually get that bolt freed up a little bit. Oh, good Lord. Okay. They're out. They're out. I got them. I got my caliper or my or whatever it's called. It's sitting on this thing. Rotor's going to come up next. It'll come right off. Ooh, rotor's not actually in bad shape, but if I'm doing the hubs, I'm just gonna do them anyway. Um, next, not necessarily perfect order here, but next, uh, there's a little cotter pin in here, and uh, you're gonna need a little needle nose here. Get them nice and tight. Then you grab the little eyelet on this side. You can kinda see it right there. And if it's not coming out, just push that a little bit. This little guy is supposed to come out nice. A little more. Woo! Aha! And then, this is a 30 millimeter nut. Now, if you don't have a breaker bar, probably gonna need one if you got impacts. Great, I'm poor. Here's my little 30 mil. It's like 16 bucks at AutoZone or Riley's or whatever, but I just build tools up as I go. Okay, so if you're dumb like me, ah, you already got the other side up in the air and you can't take the axle nut off this side. So what I did, you can see a little closer here, I put in two little lugs or wheel bolts, stuffed my uh, my little uh, crowbar in here. And since this is getting replaced anyway, who cares? And then I just got at it with the uh, breaker bar. So I, got, I just got it to break loose, so it'll be a lot easier. But then I used my foot so the bottom of this breaker bar didn't slide off. And then just push really hard, and that kept it. But uh, if you're smart, you can leave the brakes on and break the axle nut free first. I had already taken the brakes off and I couldn't get it back on the rotor with the uh, the way they had kind of already spread apart here. So if you're smart, take your brake or break the axle nut free before you take the brake off. But if you're like me and you already forgot and you're kind of past the point of no return, it's a dumb little trick on how to break that loose. So now that we're in here, we're gonna take this little ABS sensor off. All right, so this is a 3 16th um, Allen key here for the little ABS sensor. Now what I recommend doing there's so much rust, I don't know if these are the right sizes, but I got the snuggest one I could find. And then this one actually came loose pretty easy. I hadn't touched that yet before showing you. And yeah, if you have power tools, awesome. And uh, again, if this is so rusty that you can't seat it in here, I actually get it started, take a little hammer and whack it in. So give it a little tap tap so it's actually seated in there all the way. And that way you will be less likely to strip it out. Little sensor bolts out and this should just pull right up and out of here. Just like so. And then you can see up here, pull that off. And if you're ever needing to do an ABS sensor, that's where it is. So 
Yay. And then uh, we're just gonna tuck this up out of this socket here or this uh, little bracket for it. So I actually pulled it towards me. So I took the whole line and I gave it a little yank towards me and it popped right out. So I pulled it this way and it came right out. Wasn't that hard. So now we've got this a little more out of the way. All right, we're looking good. Next is going to be these top two bolts right here and these this bottom one right here and they're all uh, 18 mils. So for this part, you're gonna need an 18 millimeter uh, ratchet with a socket on the end. If you wanna use two 18 mil wrenches so you don't break your uh, ratchet, that's fine. And then this side to hold with a, uh, a little guy. Uh, you might need a breaker bar to break these loose for starters, which I'm gonna do real quick. Um, and you'll kind of find a cheat way with this is you can kind of get it to rest on here. Um, so once you get it loose, it should turn the whole uh, wrench down into this and I'll show you tricky with, with uh, one hand on the camera here, but you'll see the idea. So as I pull this down to loosen it, my ratchet will get stuck right there and I'll be able to keep turning it. And so I got a breaker on here, but um, the idea is this will hit right here and I can just keep going down. And when you're on the bottom, you can flip it up wherever it works so that that wrench will basically be your holder for it. Because if you just take this side, you'll spin the whole bolt in here. This is what holds it so that the, the nut can come off the bolt on this side. So we'll get going. Right here just to make sure I don't turn my wrench flying. But don't pinch your finger. Oh, man. Okay. I'm gonna go down to the bottom one and take that out and push the ball joint out first. Um, and actually before that as well, I'm gonna take a rubber mallet here and make sure my CV axle is freed up. And I don't wanna break that with a metal hammer, so use a rubber mallet or wrap up your hammer really good. But we're just trying to get it freed up. And yeah, it's already it's already moving around in there. You can see. See how I got that moving? That's good. That means that's not seized up in there. If that's seized up in there, I'm gonna have a whole nother problem. So I got the bolt off the end, which I'm really proud of myself. It's disgusting and rusty, and it is a pain. So now the bolt won't come out because it's so old and rusty. <laughs> There we go. You just gotta get mean with it. So now that bolt's about to come out. Here it is. Now, if you had the top bolt out, this whole thing would swing down. This whole knuckle would swing down pretty aggressively and then it's really hard to get that out and uh, pop that ball joint out. So, hammer time. Say goodbye to your knuckles. Now, you can see, I've got the ball joint out, just like that. These can be harder sometimes, but you just gotta get it with that hammer and it'll come out. So now, we're free to take out that top bolt. I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm not doing anything different. I'm just saying, the nice thing is though, you gotta hammer that bolt out. So you take the nut off. And every time I take these off, and then I pound that, bolt out of there, I immediately start them back on. So I have three little nice clean sets like so, so then I don't lose them. So um, now this knuckle is only being held on right here by the uh, tie rod and this bolt in here. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave the bolt in. I'm gonna break this little, uh, this little guy loose now. Now there's a little piece right here, you can see that has like grooves so you can hold it with a adjustable wrench. And then this little nut right here, why can't I see it? This guy, it looks like it's part of it, but it's not, it's actually separate. So we're gonna break that loose. And that'll do it. If you wanna know if you're in the right spot, this should be, should be able to move. Wow, oh, I can't do camera. This should move while the nut stays still right here. So now I got movement in that. That means I'll be able to rotate that off and we'll move on. So now we're gonna hammer out this last nut here. Whole knuckle is gonna come out. Okay, so now I've got the whole knuckle here looking all goofy and I'm just gonna spin it right off the tie rod end. And no, this is not how you replace your tie rods, but so you can see that ends right here have a little little inside to them that you have to hold while also turning this nut here to do your tie rod ends. They're so rusted I could not get the other side. I stripped out this middle piece right here. 
So I'm going to replace these tie rod ends while I have the whole knuckle out and I can stick this on a workbench and cut it off, whatever I need to do to get it off. And, you know, with the COVID-19 apocalypse upon us, I might, might need these skills. So I'm really doing you a huge favor here, assuming there's still internet. Oh, knuckle is out. Assuming we still have internet on the apocalypse. So you'll see here, the bearings on the middle right here. Hypothetically, you can whack that out with a hammer. Good for you. I'm not going to. Hub is the whole piece right here on the front that spins. And, uh, God, these are so rusty and old and crappy. The other side's all wonky. This one's actually not terrible, but I always do my fronts as a pair because I figure if one went out at 155,000, the other one's probably on the way. So that being said, I'm going to go bring this to a shop, have them put the new hub in, the new bearing in, and, um, the new tie rod as well, because why not? I'll be there. So I'd rather pay them a hundred bucks to do that part because I don't have a, a bearing press in my garage and uh, I'm tired and it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Can't make me. <sighs> Friends, uh, last we had it, uh, we pulled the knuckle out, um, the whole thing. This is our new knuckle right here with the new hub assembly and bearing press in and clip. So here's the old one. You can see it's pretty rusty, wonky. And that's what the bearing was. It took them a lot of effort to get that off. Uh, I brought it to a shop because I knew I just wasn't going to win with the bearing. Um, but you can see this bearing is... I mean, it's a lot more beat up now that they hammered it off, but they did say it was pretty bad. Both sides definitely need to be replaced. And then when you're at the auto store getting your new uh, hubs and bearings, make sure you get the little bearing clips. Because um, they said these do definitely are good to get replaced. And they're really glad I brought these with because it's a common uh, forget item. So now... We're wondering how to reorient this. Two bolts for the top. Uh, this is for the um, tie rod end right here, which I haven't installed yet, but I'm about to. And uh, here's the uh, ABS sensor. And then the one bottom slot uh, right here for the uh, ball joint to press into the bottom right here. And then the uh, bolt to go back through. And then uh, the two caliper bolts right here. So that's going to pick up and go right on there. We're going to make sure we stick the uh, CV axle in first right here i'll film as i go but make sure you put the cv axle in first so you don't forget and get it caught in neverland and then we're going to seat the uh, uh ball joint in and i'm going to put a uh top bolt in and just kind of work my way through first thing i'm going to do though, is stick the new tie rod on whole knuckle because i don't want to basically get this locked in position and then not be able to fit it up with the knuckle easily so so i'm gonna leave it like that for a minute and uh well actually probably i'll go let's see there's one uh, we'll give it one and a half. It's about where we were. And uh, I think it's going to end up facing up, if I'm not mistaken. But I'll uh, double check before I tell you for sure. The new knuckle on here, uh, the new um, tie, tie rod end right here on and tightened up the jam not on there. Uh, fed this back through its natural little clips here. And then plugged it back in and put the bolt back in for it. The little screw, whatever. And then I started the um, axle nut here, and don't forget there's a cotter pin that sticks through there and opens up um, once we get that tightened up. But I'm actually going to do the rotor, put the brake back on, or the caliper back on with the pads, get all the brake stuff set up and good to go, put the caliper bolts back in, um, rerun the brake line back into this little bracket right here. So basically get all the brakes set up completely, and then I'm going to tighten that up with the brakes held. And... Um, I actually probably won't even do that. I'm going to put the whole knuckle on the other side, get to this point on both sides of the brakes all ready to go, hold the brakes, tighten both jam nuts, or both the uh, axle nuts, and then put the little cotter pins through to finish it off. I'm just gluing the heck out of it with some uh, clear weld, uh, quick setting epoxy five minutes, and I just put some stuff to weight this side down so that it actually pushes that side down and this side up a little to even out that crack. So I already glued the whole bottom of it all, and now I'm just flipping it over and gluing the top side. And it's not going to be perfect, but again, I don't want to replace the whole panel. And uh, once we're done, we're going to stick it back on there. And I zip tied up where the, some of the little plastic rivets broke. So just zip tie those up. I'm not even going to bother with this thing because, frankly, it's still pretty friggin' solid. So I'm not worried about it. So I'm going to let that glue up and then stick those uh, the fender back on. And we'll be good to go on the Saturn from the uh, wheel falling off to new hubs, new bearings, new tie rod ends, and uh, new rotors. Um, and hopefully we have a smooth sailing, um, reliable old car for a while.